five going live we are live all right we have decided to make a change here on youtube uh with how we're doing the show rather than editing it it will just be live uh so today we're doing it as a hangouts on air uh we'll go ahead and do the normal start for the show this is atheist nomads episode 153 i will figure out a clever name for this at some point with shelly siegel <laughs> The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-haws. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Deep breathing. How are you? Hey. <laughs> and yep. uh, joining us today is Shelly Siegel. Shelly, welcome back. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. Oh, yeah, my God. It's last, been too long. We last had you on episode 17. Holy Whoa. shit. Oh, That Great was... job. 153. Uh -huh. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was 136 <laughs> episodes ago. Uh, that that episode went up. I was going to say that's at least seven episodes later. <laughs> you don't look a day older. <laughs> that episode went up December 27, 2012. Whoa. So it's it's been a while. <laughs> so, so what? You're still like 23. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into this, Wesley. I'm younger than you. <laughs> We all are. We all are. <laughs> so, Shelly, yeah. what have you been oh, up to oh. for the last four years? Well, um, I've been pretty busy. And actually, it's really nice to come back after such a long time because I think when I met you guys and when I first spoke to you, I was kind of just entering the secular community and mm -hmm. getting to understand and become involved with the secular movement here in the United States. And I'd played at the Reason Rally and done like a little tour. Well, that was a three month tour. But um <laughs> <laughs> I mean now I'm on these little tours back in the past. No, so um yeah, so since then I was four years touring the United States and a little bit of England and all around Australia. And it's um yeah it's been a great adventure i've released another four records since Holy then shit. wow and i feel i've moved to america i live in los angeles i moved here oh. about a month ago and uh, my first gig in, as a, a resident was the second reason rally in washington dc on june 4th at the lincoln memorial awesome and it was amazing. So it's, yeah, it's nice to be back because now I feel like I have this really deeper, broad uh, knowledge of the secular community here in the U.S. So we've had... That is so badass. We've had four Australians on the show at this point, and two now have moved to the U.S. Who's that? Uh, Nick Morganmore. Yeah, who is the other one? Oh, Nick right. Morganmore. Yeah, yeah. The man with the beard. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's, yeah. that's interesting. How are you uh, how are you liking the states? I love it. I feel like home. It's really great. Well, to be fair, I mean, you've spent a lot of time here in the last yeah. few years. <laughs> I have probably like yeah, at least half my time here. So, oh wow. I mean, it's still it was it's still a bit of a transition when you move to a place as opposed to just traveling in it, you know, and all the admin kind of everyday day to day stuff that you got to do. So I'm still learning more about your culture and your customs and your ways, but <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but you got to learn all those awesome things about going to the DMV. Oh yeah, I went to the, <laughs> the DMV. That was exciting. Oh wow, it's great. Oh, <laughs> I, don't oh. know, I, thought, I was really nervous. I had to do a behind the wheel test and like I've been driving over 10 years, but you have, <laughs> on the if other you side have of the an road. international license, you have to reset it. So I was just like, well, really nervous, but I got it. I was very excited. <laughs> 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 Milestone. 
Yeah, well, I, even just driving on the other side of the road, I, I did that once in Jordan, and it was it was weird. Uh, so how is that going the other way <laughs> in California well, of all places? That, <laughs> yeah, well, in the same way that you know I've been here over the last four years. When I go on tour, I'm often driving mm. from city to city, so I'm pretty used to it by now. But actually, on the first time that I came here and drove on the opposite side of the road was in 2012 and I I traveled up the coast on highway one so I was bloody terrified <laughs> not only are you on the other side of the road and having to adjust like your car seat being on the other side and the, the barriers being like really close to you and every oncoming well the opposite traveling traffic looks like it's just about to smash right into you <laughs> I was also on Highway 1 so yeah, awesome. <laughs> on beautiful the edge of a cliff. cliff mountain. And I'm like, don't look at the view. Don't even look. Just look at the road. <laughs> but it, was, it was really beautiful. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. First time I drove yeah, on the... That's, that's a great, great first time. Yeah. My like, first at least I'm going to have a beautiful view. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it's the last thing you see. It's, it's at good, least it's pretty. Yeah. yeah it's a good yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my first time driving on the right side of from the right side of the car was in Amman, Jordan. And I was only going a couple miles, but I had to go through this roundabout that was five lanes, seven cars across. At that point, they'd only had no. lanes as for a couple years. So especially in roundabouts, nobody cared about that. And it was completely packed. Everybody was doing like 50 kilometers an hour through this this roundabout. And packed so incredibly tight and i had to get out of there and i was so afraid i was going to die but i made it <laughs> yeah damn <All> right. uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh you went to, to morocco as well right yes i uh i've been to morocco i went there um as a teenager and i I visited Marrakesh and Essaouira, and it was a really exciting time for me. It was a beautiful country, and it was, um, you know, very vibrant and colorful, and I had this really intense experience there. And so I, I wrote a song about it called Morocco, and then I, I went back there, and I shot the video clip, and I released that um, about two years ago now, my song called Morocco. is from my third record, An Easy Escape. And yeah, that had some pretty mixed results, uh, mixed responses, which was pretty interesting. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't even see how that could be a mixed response. I mean, that was an awesome song and the, um, the video was beautiful. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Well, it was really funny because, you know, my first record, which I spoke to you about the first mm -hmm. time was called mm -hmm. An Atheist Album. And I didn't think it was contentious because, you know, it's just me saying my opinion and my thoughts and feelings, but I can also see how people would find an album called An Atheist Album and calling, uh, I don't know, kind of calling out the Bible and then some of the religious beliefs uh, within them. Yeah, I can see how people could think that was contentious. So I was like, all right, my controversial stuff is done. Now <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just going to sing my heart out about my experiences. And yet... It was not over. Uh, <laughs> I, I released Morocco. I put the video clip up online and I woke up in the morning and it had 5,000 views and uh, am I allowed to swear? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. of comments that were just, you are disgusting, you fat cow, you racist, da -da 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 -da. so it was really oh, interesting. Wow. I was like, oh, what's, you know, this, where is this coming from? So I Googled my name. And fat cow. No, no, no. I googled <laughs> my name, and I, I found this article, uh, in, from Morocco that said um, I translated the heading into, young Australian songwriter uh, go ahead and denounces the kingdom of Morocco. Mm. Hello? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Dustin, little, little glitch. Ah, cool. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Um. Yeah, so cool that Italian singer songwriter denounces the kingdom of Morocco. Wow. Now, there was two things that were interesting. One is that they called me young and it's in print, so I'm going to hold on to that. that yeah. You should, should. And, okay. um, and the other one is like I never denounced the kingdom of Morocco. You know, I wrote a song that, okay, basically 
it talks about me going to this beautiful, beautiful city and beautiful country. It's really easy for a tourist to get around. Right. You know, when you go somewhere and there's like these tourist conveyor belts where it's just easy for you to get everywhere. And it was beautiful holiday for me. And then as my time there went on, I started to see what it was like for some of the local people who lived there. Mm. and the lack of opportunities for young people in employment and a lot of the um, way that the religion influences equality between the sexes over there and just a lot of different issues. And so I started to see this massive contrast between what it, the experience of Morocco was like for me as a traveler, as a tourist, compared to the people that were living there and who were providing me with this fantastic, amazing time. And then... Uh, a lot of the time people would offer me um, hashish. I think that's a big, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of weed tourism, people that come there, you know, to get Moroccan hashish. And that yeah. wasn't my purpose for being there, but everyone was offering uh, offering it to me. And again, you know, I'm saying what, questioning in the song, what is it that I need to escape? What do I need to have a good time for i've actually got no problems and again looking at that contrast between myself and the people who are offering me this good time so i thought it was you know a cool introspective song but apparently not <laughs> and um <laughs> it was great it was really it was a really interesting time i guess as a songwriter you really want uh you want a strong response from what you say so some people were really angry and really offended some people were really happy there was a cool article about it in the moroccan world news and they said that this is a great opportunity uh, to have an interesting discussion about some of the issues that are going in in Morocco and that music is a great medium to start discussions that might otherwise be difficult for a population to have. And so I was really grateful for that. And, you know, it was, it was in the news in Australia as well. The funny thing was um, that they had it on the front cover of the entertainment in the age uh, which is one of the big papers in my state. And they had a, a stock picture of me and my dad from another article that they'd written about us. And it said, Seagull causes drug furor in Morocco. <laughs> and I was like right next to my dad's head. And I'm like, take that, dad. You're causing a drug, an international drug furor. And he's like, why am I in this photo? <laughs> why? <laughs> but they play... Uh, yeah, they play that song on Moroccan TV all the time. and, and Smuggle a kilo of hashish in his violin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was exciting. I like okay. that, all different things. So, but you, so you, said that, <laughs> you said they play it on, on, on TV there all the time. So obviously yeah. not everybody was offended by it. No, I think a lot of people were. And um, I guess, obviously, uh, a fat cow must be a very common insult in Morocco because that was what everyone called me. Now my dad calls me FC for short sometimes. Like, Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned not to feed the troll. So there was just so many hateful comments. And then um, someone wrote, oh, I feel so bad, you know, reading these comments for Shelley because... She must be really upset. And I don't usually respond. I wrote to this guy. I was like, don't worry. I'm not upset. I'm just upset. This, but I'm sitting around laughing at these comments with my friends. Yeah. One of them was like, come to Morocco and I'll give you head in a public toilet. You know, like they're funny. <laughs> so, and as I'm like, I'm not upset. Um, even my dad calls me fat cow as a joke now. <laughs> And then, and then I shouldn't have said that because then people were like, see, she is a fat cow. Even her dad calls her a fat cow. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, this is, and then someone else is like, that's abuse. Nobody should call Shelly a fat cow. That's not fair. No, 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 no. Shelly's dad's really bad. And it was just a funny, yeah. It was a funny time. Nice. Wow. You know, with, with that kind of trolling, you need to be able to laugh at it. And get a thick skin. <laughs> Great, you trolled yourself. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put this out here because uh, a couple of weeks ago I got some face masks that look really cool. They have like little patterns on them. I got a kabuki mask. Got a couple of cats, and other stuff. And so um, I had a shaving accident last night. So. That's why I'm clean shaven now. So mm. we are totally going to do face masks later. 
Did you bring the mask? Yeah, Why yeah. are we starting the show wearing the masks? Come I on. was kind of thinking that. It'd be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be fun. We will have to take pictures, maybe. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So yeah, definitely no hashies tonight. Oh boy, you hey, are in Washington um, after all. This is true. That stuff's just not allowed there. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have weed tourism in that way? Like, do people come here? Oh, I'm, I'm sure we do. Because of the uh, probably Colorado more. Smoking? I, I I don't know. I I see. I would think that Colorado might have it more because one, I don't think there's any states like closer to the east than Colorado that has legal weed. And mm. I don't Colorado's know. gotten all the attention today. about it. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, um I, I just think Washington State is a much better overall state. So yeah, probably. It's really beautiful here. <laughs> I love it here. That's the plan. <laughs> oh, you're Maybe trying to get her to get all <laughs> Yeah. Man. Yeah, so let's see. Uh albums. Um four albums now. So you had uh the your your atheist album. Mm -hmm. Um what came after that? The one with Morocco. Uh, then I worked on a project with Adam Levy, who is a fantastic singer-songwriter, uh, also based in LA. And he uh, played with Tracy Chapman for quite a few years, and he played with Nora Jones. And he has all his own stuff too, like country and Americana and jazzy folk, just a bit of everything. And, yeah, we sat in a hotel room for a week together, and we wrote a record and we recorded it in downtown LA. And so that was my second record. That was Little March. And then my third record was uh, An Easy Escape, which had Morocco on it. Mm -hmm. And then last year I released an EP called Strange Feeling. And yeah, that was great. That went really well. Uh, the single from that was Side Sideline, which was kind of a... Um, reflection on body image and the nature of our aesthetics and branding actually I was going through uh, a time where I was looking at my image as an artist and deciding how I wanted or just realizing that that is a very important part of being an artist is having an image whereas I hadn't really focused on that before because it's you know for me it's always just about the music but that is a big part of the industry and being part of the industry. And I'm also a small business owner. I run a record label, True Music, uh, with my dad. And we, you know, you need to, we need to consider all those kinds of things for our artists. So, you know, I can't just leave me out of that. And so I, I that song was kind of a way for me to discuss that openly and, and show my fans what I was thinking about. And, and the clip's really cool. It's kind of me getting my makeup done and showing, you know, the difference in the way that you look over the course of the video. And then there's the two girls, like the two versions of me, one I made up and one with makeup and kind of comparing them. And, you know, it's the girl that's made up that takes the, the, the guitar and leaves the house because that's what she has to do. And then, but also not just so much from the personal perspective, but from the broader perspective of, the extent to which uh, the aesthetic expectations that are placed on us by, by society impact our lives. Uh, because I, I think, you know, body image is, is a really interesting discussion. And I think body positivity is, is really important. And representation Definitely. of different bodies in the media is mm -hmm. really important. And it's a big topic at the moment. But I, a lot of the time, with that stuff, people say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's what's inside that counts. But what I'd come to realize through my own journey is that it does matter. You know, maybe we, we wish that it didn't or we think that it shouldn't because we think we value character more in some way. But the reality is that the way that we look will profoundly affect our outcomes. And studies show that in the first second that you meet someone you already make seven decisions about oh, yeah. whether you trust them how much money they earn where they come from 
you know, before they've had a chance to open their mouth and give you a little bit of the kind of person that they are. So, so are these, you know, undeniably part of the framework of our lives. So just, you know, kind of accepting that, but looking at it in a critical way and saying, is this something we can overcome and how can we overcome it? And part of that, I think, is having discussions about it. Well, mm -hmm. that first that first impression is direly important, apparently, still. So, yeah, you know, work the system and well, until you can change it. Yeah. It, it, it is so interesting how much it, it's, it changes from culture to culture and over time. Hmm. Like, the, the ideal body of like ideal woman's body of today in our society uh, has curves, whereas 20 years ago, uh, the ideal woman didn't. And 50 years ago, uh, the ideal woman by modern standards would be obese. Yeah. And that's just for America. That it's, is, that's it's funny. Good, good One movement. example I always think about is um, eyebrows. So the fashion for women's eyebrows now is to be really thick. And uh, some of my girlfriends who, when they were younger, uh, the fashion was for them to be very thin. So they would go and get their eyebrows waxed and plucked mm -hmm. and, and made very thin. And now that the fashion is for it to be thick, you know, they can't grow their eyebrows out because they spent so much time making it to the fashion that now they can't be fashionable. So I was joking <laughs> with one of my younger cousins. I said, don't wax, don't do anything. Keep your arm here. You'll never know when it's going to be in fashion. We'll be getting ma giant mascara rolls for our legs and, <laughs> you know, really making it stand out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, it's what's, what's coming. And I was having a discussion with my friend uh, last week who works in AI and, you know, we were saying when we're cyborgs, what's, What's the, how are aesthetics going to come into it? What's the fashion going to be? Little blue blinky lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's blue. Blue's best. Red looks so angry. <laughs> <laughs> man. But, but man, yeah, that is such a, a, a big topic. And it gets, it gets weird and and complicated and there's nuance that needs to be at play because there's there's certain levels where yeah you shouldn't be an asshole straight up you just should not be an asshole but we should also not be encouraging people to be uh too skinny or too overweight to where it's going to be causing health problems the society needs to find a balance. I don't think we're we're anywhere near that point right now. I think we're getting to a healthier place as far as how we handle it, but we're definitely not to where the ideal should be. Well, I think we're getting better at you know not talking shit about people's uh, bodies, but as far as like healthy choices, as as far as what we do and what we eat, no, fuck no, we're light years away from but what what's available to people i mean what i'm learning here you know with rates and stuff like that it's cheaper to go out to mcdonald's than to cook for your family you know what are people's options here to to have healthy diets mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and as well you know it's more uh, are more than just about weight uh it's talking about so for me you know i was talking about from a weight perspective because that was what inf really informed my a big part of my opinion on it because that's my personal experience of how I don't fit into the norm. And so, you know, I'm, I have a body which I like, which is irrelevant or not if I do, but I do just for <laughs> well, it, It's um, irrelevant if yeah. anybody else does, but it's good that you like your own. Yeah. Yeah. But like, so the media is projecting it to me of what the ideal body is. And so all of a sudden in the song, I have the wrong body and my body is wrong, not because I want it to be, but by this system and standard that is set up from outside of myself and so that's why i think it's you know representation in the media is really important for a broad um range of bodies and types and so not even just in terms of the body positive movement if we're talking about um people differently abled people how often are they represented in media and advertising in television shows how how you know, if if you don't see yourself reflected in the media, then again, you don't. You have the wrong body. If your sexual orientation is not represented in the media, at least to the representative, like to the 
percentage that it is reflective of the wider population, then you know, then you're you're not fitting into what is beauty, what is the correct image. If how much how much you're sitting away from those expectations, you know, what is a what is a woman? How are women presented in in media if I'm not uh, conforming to those standards of what a female is or what a male is, then, you know, again, that's going to affect your outcome of your life. And that, and the media is what's shaping our norms. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's informing the way that we feel about ourselves. That's a big reason why I don't watch TV. I mean, I, I, sure. I watch movies on occasion, but as far as like just general all, all that sh- stuff that's on regular TV, I just don't watch it. And I think most of it's just really valueless because it, it does give the wrong impression to a lot of people. But movies are worse yeah. um, because they're paying top dollar. So they can be a lot pickier about which actors and actresses they get than TV shows. Well, what can. about this, this year with the, with the Oscars? Not one black nominee. Oh, yeah. In the whole Oscars, what is that saying about whose stories we want to listen to in America? And yeah. who has value? And so a representation. And is it saying that? And you know, there's that endless question of who who is the media a reflection of us? We're we, you know creating the media. Is the media creating us? But regardless of of where it starts, you know those those stories and those perspectives that are not getting the attention and validation as being fully human that they deserve to be. Yeah. And lacking that validation is, is definitely unhealthy because, you know, that's going to be detrimental to people's uh, mental health. Their, their self-esteem has the risk of pushing people towards, towards, uh, depression or making that worse and that's just bad Suicide. across the board yeah and it's hard for for you know if someone is a bit different if you uh are a trans person or you identify in a you know something that's not the traditional way your family's used to if, if it's not normal it's not going to be acceptance in their families and their wider communities did you guys see um, Jesse Williams' speech the no. other day? It was really cool. Mm-mm. He's um, on Black Entertainment Television. He gave a really, really powerful speech. Uh, no, do tell what uh, um, some details. Just uh, totally putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, totally on the spot. But what did he? What was he saying? You know, just one of the one of the parting things that he said was, "Just because we're magic doesn't mean we're not real." And uh, <laughs> I thought that was that was really powerful and about um, just about the using and appropriation of black culture and and black people, black bodies, and taking that back. And uh, yeah, it's just it was powerful and empowering to see. And I wish that was part of our mainstream dialogue as opposed to um, you know in a different space. Where we were not everyone seeing it. Well, I think it got it went viral, like a lot of people saw it. Hmm. Nice. I've taken us on a tangent now. <laughs> uh, no. I, I was just thinking about cultural appropriation and that, you know, there's a lot of uh, shit talked about like uh, black women's hair or their bodies, and then, you know, white people or other races do the same thing and then no oh, they're so cool and hip and it's kind of really sad kind of pathetic really that mm-hmm. that we can't just love everybody just a little bit mm-hmm. right. it's an interesting discussion with cultural appropriation because yeah, I mean, there's no like definitive right or wrong answer of what you should wear or how you can dress or, you know, if it's if it's wrong or right. And some people from this culture say you can and some people say you can't. There's no like definitive answer, but just looking broadly, if we can find a way to make sure that the the, the generators of a cultural idea are the ones that are receiving, you know, the money for 
for that um for that creation or that art or that idea but that's you know that's tied into so many problems with inequality it's like certain communities or parts of society are set up that they're going to be the ones that can monetize any kind of idea so i I think it's a combination of personal decisions and 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 deciding how you dress or not dress or you know just your own personal engagement with it but then from a you know broader institutional perspective as well like i used to have dreadlocks and i you know i felt great wearing them and i loved them and um but it was a was an interesting issue now that i don't have them anymore i guess the way i feel about it is if you want to participate if uh, for me because it's very it's personal for me if i want to participate in a culture that's perfectly fine but then what are you doing to give a voice to that culture as well if you want to be part of it and you identify with it and you or you you know you enjoy it you like it what are you doing to um to give voice to people within that culture and what are you doing to empower the people within that culture that's how i feel about it now yeah all right let's uh go ahead and take a, a break and uh we'll be back in just a little bit we love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also <laughs> help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. Okay, so, so uh, I want to give a quick shout out. Hello, Daniel Lee. Right, fuck you, <laughs> love you. All right, see you in a week or two. Because he's watching live in oh, his TV nice. because science. <laughs> awesome. And probably a Chromecast. <laughs> <laughs> Chromecast makes it easy, but there's there's other lots of other ways to watch uh, there, watch on YouTube from from your TV. Point. 35 bucks well spent oh yeah yeah all right so what is this i heard about giving music lessons last night oh yeah we had a jam we had a jam last night me and mj yeah it was really fun oh shit <laughs> you missed out big time oh no no you guys are gonna be playing here later right yeah play a song play a song uh both not you, you? <laughs> <laughs> well Bye, I, I know that uh, <laughs> I know Shelly's definitely going to uh, play a song for us here in a, in a little while. Yeah, so enjoy it. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> so how was uh how was the Reason Rally? Uh, neither of us were able to go and and uh yeah, I was at the the 2012 Reason Rally but wasn't able to make it to this year's. It was great. I mean, the location was really And we lost them. Marbles, brands, hello? Oh, you're back. Hello. <laughs> Hi. You disappeared. Uh, uh, well, we could hear us. We could hear you too. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was just saying that, but you know, the same as 2012, the atmosphere was really electric and it was. It's a special event for so many reasons. I feel like, you know, it's it's putting that message out there. It's normalizing atheism and secularism, but also it's fostering community and solidarity and creating a space where people who, for the majority, well, for many of them, for the majority of their lives, can't be open about their beliefs in their communities and their families. So, you know, here's one day of the, you know, in four years maybe, where they get to go and be surrounded by people that share their worldview and be able to be open and outspoken about it. And, and that was pretty cool. That was exciting. And a lot of great organizations were there. And um, what's it called when you run a tent? Not tendering. Uh, 
Um, well, I, I know that there was a lot oh, of vendoring. groups. Yeah. <laughs> vendoring? <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of vendors there that were, oh, okay. um, you know, really great organizations. Um, black non-believers, ex-Muslims, uh, communities, you know, just showing people, particularly in communities where it's harder to come out as, a, as an atheist or so much of that community is tied into the church. So just showing that there's a space for them and a community for them. Uh, also a group called Recovering from Religion was there mm -hmm. and I love those guys. I do a bit of work with them. Their hotline is an amazing uh, resource to people over all over the country who can call up and talk, uh, get peer support uh, in regards to issues to do with faith or um, doubt or uh, something if someone they know is going through something, then it's just a you know a space for them to to reach out and talk about things they might otherwise not be able to talk about again with their families or communities. So in your travels though, over these last few years since you know first time we talked and now, uh, how do you how do you think the atheist community is doing? Because you can kind of get around and see what's going on. Yeah, well on. that's been that's been so cool. You know, like I've been to twenty five states now, and I've seen a community from a grassroots level. And it's really exciting. I feel really, really uh, positive about the future for secularism in this country because of meeting all the people that I'm meeting and seeing all the groups that I get to play for. You know, for example, the 13 people in Baton Rouge in Louisiana who do school drives or clean, take, you know, clean the highway, the atheists on the highway and, and some people are working just as I said like similar to the reason like, just to normalize atheism just to show to participate in their wider community under the banner of an atheist or people without belief the idea that those kind of people aren't devil worshippers you know they're just average everyday citizens that care about their community and want to participate then there's other groups around the country that are just you know a support network for people who have left religion. Um, I've done gigs with recovering from religion groups and, you know, just like 15, 20 people in a house and playing songs and we take turns going around the group, everyone telling stories about their experiences and it's just amazing to see the support resources that are set up for people who are basically walking out of, in some cases, cults to be in a country in America, it's, they feel like tourists in their own country because it's the first time they're able to watch television or, oh, you sure. know, go, go outside, listen to music and participate in their wider culture. So, and then there's so, groups that are more politically active, uh, you know, recovering from religion organization, have a legal team around the clock who are working to push back against, you know, unfair legislation, the, the, the battle, the culture wars that are happening, happening, uh, in the, the legal world and yeah there's some amazing organizations doing amazing things and then as well over the four years i've seen it kind of change a bit uh the, the conferences seem to be uh so they'll have atheist or secular or free thinking humanist conferences uh all over the country usually at the na uh, state level and some national levels for the bigger organizations and uh they, I think, traditionally had more of a, uh, you know, just speakers, scientists, uh, politicians, activists, but I feel like they're starting to foster a bit more of a community vibe. So when I started playing music, a lot of the time that was the f one of the first times they'll have music or entertainment. But now, you see every conference has comedians and an art show and and a couple of different singers, and so there's this real culture I feel that's coming out of the of the conference movement now anyway, which is really, which is interesting and beautiful. And I think it makes, it is gonna speak to a wider array of people who are looking for uh, different things from a movement. I've also seen a real um, effort from the community in terms of trying to accommodate diversity like you know the, the movement is changing demographically and so they're working hard to reflect that in the speakers i mean now so it's not just old white males anymore. yeah exactly you <laughs> go to a conference now and it's like half female speakers and 
um, people of color, people of all different backgrounds and, and different voices coming through. And I think they're doing a really good job. Like, I think there's a lot of movements that are going through the same growing pains now where the demographics are changing and maybe they were traditionally um, white male dominated spaces and, and so they're adjusting and, and yeah, that's been cool to see as well. I know it's very controversial in the, <laughs> in the blogs, that whole, that whole thing. I just don't understand why it should be controversial. I mean, not, not only just white old males are atheists. I think it's hard. I think it's really hard. This is why I'm a musician and not a politician. You know, it's really hard to <laughs> dictate behavior, and it's hard for people to to be. It's hard for people to be told how they should speak, and they don't want to. And I understand that too. You know, and so you you got to find a balance. I mean, there's people I know like complete freedom of speech, and they they don't want to be told what to do. They're good people, and they and they'll you know push all the boundaries that's just the kind of people that they are and and they want to be able to be themselves freely in 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 different situations and i respect that but then also there's people that you know want to come to a community event and feel you know that don't want to feel aggression towards them they don't want to be made to feel unsafe they want their safety considered so you know those are all those are both really valid perspectives and and it must be hard for organizers and people that you know create policy for conferences and groups and you know um that, that would be hard to to decide and determine and create the the wording of those policies so i'm not envious of those people <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> all right about time for break uh yes it is all right so yeah we'll take our last break and uh then we'll be back with the uh rest of the interview and some music hooray um yeah thank if you like the show consider giving us some financial support to make it really easy with one-time donations or to support us on a per episode oh oh shit oh uh, the links on the right page one bone episode oh yeah Dustin? Yeah. How good. Okay. <laughs> Did Meredith trip on something? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what what fell? Uh the the power cord. Oh to plug in everything. Oh. Okay. Wow. Uh yeah, so I saw everything go dim for a second, but it's it's still back on. It's still on. So, All right. right. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Uh, so, uh, how's the uh, how, how's your experience going with the like the the music community? Um, are you finding that, like, s since you've spent uh, quite a bit of time traveling um, across multiple different countries, um, is How's the, the, the American uh, music industry? It's the best in the world. <laughs> I'm not just saying that it sucks, you know, like that's why I'm here. I mean, no, I'm, um, that's why I've moved to Los Angeles uh, because that's where it's at. That's the, the biggest thriving uh, part of the music industry. Uh, Wesley was trying to convince me to move here. I know that you guys have. I don't need to convince There's you. A, yeah, I know I want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move up, you know, from LA, just slowly. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Every year, a couple yeah. of miles um, <laughs> until I get here. But it's, um, yeah, it's amazing. It's so different than Australia. There's just so many more people here. You could just... And trees. Yeah. <laughs> here, I could go on the road for three months and I can play a show, get up in the morning, get in my car, drive a couple of hours, be in another city, another town, get out, play another gig. And I can just do that every day for three months. I can't do that in Australia because um, there's just not that many people, not that many towns, not the population. I mean, I love yeah. Australia and I love touring in Australia, but. Well, in the middle in of Australia, of, yeah, the, the, just barren death. <laughs> full of a lot of things that want to kill you. There's no bears. There's no bears. That's the other thing I've heard the most of 
while I've been here. Evan's like, oh my God, I really want to come to Australia. It's on my bucket list, but everything's going to kill me. Like, you guys have yeah. spiders. I'm like, you guys have bears. You know, <laughs> what's, the, what's the lions and tigers and bears? It's yeah, like, you can see a bear coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just in Glacier National yeah, you Park. Can't outrun it. You can't stand on it. And anyway, we had, like, we had a grizzly. I live in, in, I live in the yeah. city. In you know, I lived in Melbourne, in Australia, and I see as many spiders here as I as I do there, it's not like yeah, but you know, our spiders aren't going to kill you. Some of them will. Nah. And it was like, oh, and snakes. And you guys have rattlesnakes. No, we don't. Oh, you don't. Where I'm at, we do. Okay, well, Eastern Washington does. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's an old, it's an old discussion. I, I, I get hit with it so many times. I want to make one of those, you know, clickbait pages where it's like 25 things that will kill you in America, because <laughs> <laughs> I see it from Australia uh -huh. all the time. I mean, Washington State, Bear there's two things. Roads. It's like earthquakes or volcanoes. Uh, that's pretty much it. That, that's all. Tornadoes. We don't have any tornadoes. We don't have earthquakes. We have fires. We have pretty bad fires. <laughs> oh, we have those here, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we get basically every natural disaster in the U.S. Uh, plus skinheads. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so with your question, like the music community is amazing here, and it's really big. And I've been busy touring with my community. And so now that I live here, I'm branching out and I'm starting to you know, get to know the folk scene and, and meeting different musicians. And yeah, I'm really loving it. And I'm excited to get really into it. Yeah. So what projects are you working on? Um, I'm working on a bit. So I'm still, you know, I run my record label working on that over here and building opportunities for my other artists um can you what, mention artists yeah one of our girls maya m-a-y-a -A, she is incredible incredible electro soul singer and just a beautiful girl she just wants to heal everyone through through music and bring all that she's crazy energy she just gets up on the stage and runs around and gets everyone going and is she really small no, she thought she's about my height. Is that okay, is that really small? <laughs> what are you saying? With, you're just really tall. <laughs> but she, uh, <laughs> just like there's always tons of energy in little tiny people. They're like ah! yeah, pocket pocket rocket. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> uh -oh, is there another meaning for that? I saw that your eyelids go up. All right. There's several other meanings. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yep, we have vipers. <laughs> um, yeah, so Maya is going to be releasing her first single through our label uh, next month in July. So you can check that out. And I'm working on a new EP, which should be out this year. I'm really excited about it. I've heard some of it. It sounds really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started a Patreon. So for like a dollar a month, people can get my entire solo back catalog, um, behind the scenes stuff, all my new releases. So a new release will cost about 12 or $15 anyway. So for 12 bucks a year, you'll get all my old stuff and all my new stuff as it comes out. And also just like behind the scenes stuff, or even today you saw me, I was editing a live show that I did in San Diego this month and I'm going to give that to my patreon so just yeah enjoying exploring that you guys have a patreon it's we a do. pretty cool way to connect with your fans and provide them with content so i'm just getting into that and finding like oh what kind of cool stuff can i give everyone and getting into home recordings i'll be i think i'm going to be spending a lot of time kind of curating stuff for that we're going to be putting out a t-shirt here really soon. I promise it. It's not going to be like fucking cog. This is welcome at, I mean, it's not going to take two years to make uh. promise. <laughs> uh, I have to remake that, uh, my, my image for the shirts. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. What is it going to say? It's going to be our logo, but it's just going to be like a, a four tone. So we can do like a screen, uh, a sc a screen, the, the t-shirt screen, uh, silk screening. Screen printing. And, uh, Silk screening, yeah. So, anyways, uh, our logo, but not all the the pretty mountains, but just like, you know, very color, nice color, color variations. But, anyways, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just a, a nice, nice setup that we can easily get done and make yeah. them look pretty and make them look good. Um, anyways, I'll shut up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I am. Uh, the NOS is definitely hitting me now. <laughs> Getting a little hyper. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> mm. Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna have to get strong, calm down. <laughs> oh goodness! And we have people commenting about the show. What the fuck? Does anyone have any questions? Oh. Yeah. Holy shit, yeah. We should all, yeah, take a look. Okay, well, we're kind of pausing the show to look on social medias. <laughs> this is live. We are brought to you live. Uh, oh, geez, yeah, I promise we're... we're one viewer lives. still, so I'm guessing uh, he'd be the one. <laughs> it's totally Daniel. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome, Daniel. And so, yeah. Uh I expect you to be a Patreon on Shelley's account really soon. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren just waved. Oh, someone no. said that they can't connect. Jeff Schwartz is trying to connect. Oh, maybe yeah. I said your name. Sorry. Are you using Periscope? Um, uh, yeah, this is on YouTube. Hang out on air. Straight to YouTube. So. On YouTube. Straight. Cool. Well, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get Jeff on board soon. <laughs> yeah. What about you guys? Do you have um, any We're upcoming events? Oh, we should tell people about the rally. Um, I'm going to be playing at a rally tomorrow morning. We're having what, um, Robert Ray is a local activist and organizer as well of a of a group. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And he, podcaster and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has a the, the, a giant bee in his bonnet, a, rightfully so, about uh, getting In God We Trust out of uh, our government offices and cop cars and all that. And there's going to be a rally down in, in Olympia uh, just just for that. And, and that's tomorrow. That is. What that, time is it starting? I think oh, 11. goodness. I think it's from 11 o'clock in Olympia. Do we? So Olympia, Washington on a, yeah. <laughs> that is going to be Wednesday, the 29th. Yeah. So at for 11 those listening to the podcast, it was yesterday. Yeah, pretty much. Or later <laughs> than that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's at the Washington state Capitol on the North lawn. Thanks, MJ tech support. Yeah. <laughs> Tech support and atmosphere. She's like getting the smoke machine going. <laughs> Producer Meredith. Hell yeah. <laughs> Looks so cute with her little glasses on. <laughs> no. So yeah, that'll be that'll be um pretty great tomorrow. Are you yeah. coming? I gotta work. Go work. I I have I have to work. I'm like my bare amount of hours so that I can like actually go to a wedding in August in the other coast. South Carolina. And then I still have to take another 40 off at the end of the year because we're forced. So, yeah, hooray, right, government work. And who's the other guest? There's um, Becky and Sam yeah. from Ask an Atheist will be guests at the rally. Bad I'll be ass. playing some songs. It's going to be good. Awesome. Yeah. Come down, Jeff and Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Okay, so we are uh, starting to to run low on time. You're going to do some music for us, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh. And is that going to be a part of this live experience, or are we going to be piecing this in later? Uh, I think we can play a live song here. All right. So I'm going to step out of the way a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna tune my guitar, and Wesley's gonna tell you. Uh, this is gonna be like my stage. 
somebody like if you're on like okay wesley's gonna tell a story now or a joke yeah I, my microphone's i just there. took the mic from him <laughs> how's that how do i feel this is called the tuning song oh very nice okay. everybody's favorite guitar song songs oh uh, we've got time for how long are the songs our uh, songs are about four minutes each we could do two okay cool well the first song i like to play i think is relevant to you know because we were talking about it before i'll play sideline uh, which is a song about body image and aesthetic expectations Wait, actually, before you start, uh, would it be possible to switch the microphones? Because the the PR40 is picking up the uh, guitar way too well. Now it gets a little tight. Some more gymnastics. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to destroy everything. <laughs> yeah, a couple seconds. Hello. I just put your foot on it. Oh no, you're good. All right, cool. Well, this one is called a sideline. You want a skinny lover, you want a skinny lover, so I fry. I have the wrong body, I have the wrong body, even though I have, I have the right mind. You want a skinny lover, you want a skinny lover. And it's perfectly fine, but it means you will always, means you will always want some other body more than you want mine, more than you want mine. But this is familiar, it's who we've become, slaves to aesthetic, this is the tune that we hum. Can we change who we are? Can we remove the filter from over our hearts? If you're not beautiful, you'll be sidelined. We let go of our pride, of how we look on the outside. Anyways, I thought love was supposed to be blind. Be blind. You want a skinny lover, you want a skinny lover, and it's perfectly fine. Means I have the wrong body, have the wrong body, even though I am, I am the perfect kind. But this is familiar, it's who we've become, slaves to aesthetic, this is the tune that we hum. Can we change who we are? Can we remove the filter from over our hearts? If you're not beautiful, you'll be sidelined. 
Can we let go of our pride of how we look on the outside? Anyways, I thought love was supposed to be blind, be blind. For the first time in my life, I wish I was somebody else. All those bottles of teenage self-consciousness tumbling down from the shell. But this is familiar, it's who we've become. Slaves to aesthetic, this is the tune. This is the tune that we hum. Can we change who we are? Can we remove the filter from over? If you're not beautiful, you'll be sidelined. Can we let go of our pride of how we look on the outside? Anyways, I thought love was supposed to be blind, be blind, be blind. Yeah. Can't hear if you're saying something. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Very nice. Good job. Thanks. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, Jeff said he can't get on. Hmm. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry. I'll link. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can see us. <laughs> and then um I'll um I'll play another song, I think. While we're waiting, I got this amazing yeah. t shirt. Because they're both bounty hunters. Interesting. I know there's at least I know there's at least two people out there laughing and liking it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Alright, so um I'm gonna play another song. It's a song that I played at the Reason Rally. I've been really vibing on it lately. And it's from my record, it's the album F and it talks about some of the dangers that are inherent in the belief in our afterlife and a focus on the next life instead of a focus on this life, which is the only one we know we have for sure. Follow the guidebook for an after life. Which one do I try? Which one do I try? I, I'd like to believe that I'll never die, but I can't comply. No, I can't comply. Pointed representatives of their own imaginings in the sky. They want to usher in the messianic age. They don't mind if it's brought on by nuclear rage. They are so sure of their ability to outlive the utility of their bodies. But just remember that was the last thought in the brain of every suicide bomber in every hijacked plane. Follow the guidebook for an afterlife. Which one do I try? Which one do I try? I, I like to believe that I'll never die. But I can't comply. No, I can't comply. Thousands and thousands are humming that the second coming's coming. And if our mental responsibility is succumbing to suicidal longing for paradise, can't they see it's already before our eyes? And all the 
makes us who we are. We find cannot survive without a mind. We spin through it all with the knowledge that you only have. Follow the guidebook for an afterlife. Which one do I try? Which one do I try? I, I like to believe that I'll never die. But I can't comply. No, I can't comply. From the day you were born, you are going to die. It's not a pleasant thought at all. But the way that I deal with it is to treasure each moment with my surroundings. And those that I love. I spend my days trying to engage with the world To learn as much about everything as I can Using the body of knowledge which that shared heritage To further understand the historical and evolutionary context of man To hold revelation in a higher place Is to spit in the face of those who chose To dedicate their lives to inner child Follow the guidebook for an afterlife which one do I try? Which one do I try? I, I like to believe that I'll never die, but I can't comply. No, I can't comply. Shalom Alechem, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Me Hamelech, me Hamelech, Shalom Alechem, Malachi Ashalom, Malachi Elion, no, me Melech, Malachi Hamalachim, me Hamelech, me Hamelech, Ani Hamelech. Ah, uh, very nice. Okay, so this totally reminds me of one of my favorite memories ever, and that is being in a small Kansas hotel, getting <laughs> stoned, and Shelly just, like, singing to us for hours. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> or it might have just been, like, put off my ass. And it was, that was really fun. It was a lot of fun just laying there on the bed, just listening. It's awesome. Yeah, stoned. Stone audiences are the best. <laughs> <laughs> they really feel uh, it. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> All right. Well, Shelly, thank you very much. Um, thank we you are, so much for having me. We nice are. Nice to speak to you again. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, we're out of time, but there is one bit of feedback I saw on uh, iTunes today that I do want to address. Oh. Since apparently this person. Uh, well, you can't respond to iTunes comments any other way than on the show. And uh, uh -oh. Miss Ginger 58 apparently hasn't been listening all that closely. So I want to make sure Miss Ginger 58, I hope you are still listening. Um, but I'll, I'll read the comment or the, the review. It was a two star. Uh, Love the regular podcast, but I can't stand stand this chick's pet project geek thing. I have been listening for some time and I think this is a five star podcast. But the sci-fi geek thing needs to go, please. If they want to do that, then they need to make a separate podcast for it. Once that nonsense stops, I'll change my review to five stars. Well, Miss Ginger58, painting it as this chick's pet project isn't accurate. It was my idea, not my wife's. We have posted two episodes of Sci-Fi Nomads, and this is the gauge feedback before we buy the extra domain name hosting plan etc. This is something that I have already explained several times on the show, which apparently you missed. I even put out a special two-minute bit less than a week ago. Just... Okay, it was a little over a week ago. All right, all right, <laughs> anyway, I put trolls. out a two-minute bit just to assure you that people like you who don't like sci-fi that Atheist Nomads is not changing. Fortunately, we're, we're the, not going first, anywhere. the first person to complain had the decency to email us Rather than hope that I check iTunes. I'm sorry you had to click skip twice now, but that was a calculated risk I took to try to gauge and generate some interest and excitement for a second podcast before releasing it. However, have no fear. 
There will be no more Sci-Fi Nomads episodes going up on this feed. It will have its own this weekend. All right, so uh, get your ass back over to iTunes and change that to a five star. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. All right, that's all. Uh, and Durant. All right. <laughs> yes, uh, and Durant. Um, Shelly, thank you again for, for coming on. This was, it was oh, a blast. Yeah, freaking amazing. I'll see you guys in another four years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see. Yeah. I'll see. I'll, I'll, maybe personally more often than that but yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, have me back on the show anytime it's always great to chat all right well we've got a, a quote of every 136 episodes at this point so we'll have to see if we can do better than that <laughs> yeah. and uh, for, our, for our listeners we'll be back next week with news yay <laughs> <laughs>